Both of these guys have been in action this year, fortunately for them. February of uh, 2020 for Sanchez, he got a TKO uh, win. And Solis, we saw him uh, in October with a unanimous decision win over Eddie Valencia. Both prospects with solid records on paper. Seven and one with four knockouts for Sanchez. 11 and 0 with six knockouts for Alon Solis. The big disparity is an amateur experience. A six time Mexican champ Solis with a record, I think he said he was 87 and six. And Sanchez told me he only had about 20 amateur fights. So that amateur pedigree, as you know, TJ, is extremely important in, in the sweet science. What's, what's the right number, you think, Smitty, for amateur bounce? You know, it, <laughs> if you're from Cuba 300 <laughs> or from Kazakhstan or, right. or somewhere, it just depends. You know, if you can get, if you can even get in, uh, my God, if you, 100 is phenomenal. I, I, well, I had none. I went right to the pros, and that's why I had a very, very short career, about as short as my height, because it just makes such a difference. And I was down there in Miami with all those Cuban fighters that were so experienced and uh, the one of the things, I'd, if I could do anything and wave a magic wand, it would be to bring our amateur program in this country back to what it used to be. I don't think it'll ever be there again, but it, uh, that's a great question. I, I, I would certainly say if you can have 50, that, that should be the minimum in my opinion. But, you know, you see so many guys now um, that really don't have that amateur experience. It's... Well, I mean, you can't really make up for experience and I think you know time and time again that's a narrative in a lot of fights is you know a veteran calling upon uh, experience to maybe sometimes beat a better fighter on paper but right now these guys are definitely going for it we saw uh, Sanchez kind of posturing a little bit trying to bait Solis maybe into a firefight very slick move there by Solis slipping a shot and then countering with a, with a very accurate right hand gets nailed with a nice jab there by Sanchez Really loading up on that left hand of the body, but a left hand finds the head of Sanchez by Solis. Oh, About 10 seconds here of round number one. First one in the books between these featherweights. What I'd like to see Solis do too, and I mentioned no, this when I was water, calling his, his last okay. fight, a little more upper body oh. movement, head movement, shoulder movement. Uh, he's dipping there pretty good, but his head kind of a stationary target. Uh, and Sanchez, his head definitely a stationary target. So, Ooh, wow. nice right hand finds the head of Solis. Sanchez trying to make a count. You see what I mean about not having that head movement? Yeah, that hurt him. That yeah. rocked him, uh, TJ. So he's still a little shook up, and what Sanchez should do is jump all over him. See if Solis can buy some time to recover. He's still throwing, but eats another right hand. Short uppercut as well by Sanchez. Trying to make something happen here is Abelardo Sanchez in business, but Solis... So far, so good as far as weathering the storm is concerned. Four KOs in his seven victories for Sanchez. And I, I noticed the power early, and you could hear the power down here in, in round one with one of his body shots. It's the interesting thing about during this pandemic, the way you can hear the shots. Solis has done a good job of weathering the storm and trying to get himself back in it. But believe me, he was hurt. He's still a little wobbly. Blood coming, I think, from his mouth. And just past the halfway point here, round number two. I mean, when you Man. look at Sanchez, he's in business, but how much do you sell out trying to get a stoppage here? I mean, there's still six rounds to go after this. You know, I think from what I see, it's a great uh, question, but I think I would go after it for if I were Sanchez because uh, I saw some wobbliness from uh, Solis slowing down, uh, TJ. After the break a second ago, he's still 
a little wobbly. Yeah, you can tell by the, the look in his eyes. I mean, he's still very much fighting, but you can tell he's just not what he was earlier in the fight. Sometimes uh, you get that opportunity, and if you don't capitalize, you don't get it again. It slips away. You're right, you don't want to gash yourself out, but the, you know, if you're a good fighter, you, you know what you have in that tank. And adrenaline, when you got a guy hurt, you got to go for it. If you're, especially if you got a good pop uh, in your punch, and I, and I think Sanchez does. So Lee's now really basically playing defense. No, nah, that's not what you do by Sanchez. Showboating, he should be <laughs> letting his hands go like that. There we do, and that clearly was Sanchez in that second round. Round three underway. Solis in the white with red, Sanchez in the black with gold. As you heard, Smitty has this even through two rounds. Solis was definitely hurt in round number two, but was able to switch his strategy to one that was more defensive and We'll see how he tries to respond here in round number three. Definitely get the feeling that the harder puncher of these two is Sanchez. The question is, as his fight goes deeper, will Sanchez be able to retain that power as he becomes more winded? Nice jab there by Solis, finds a home. And that's what he should be doing. He should be moving more and establishing that stick, that left jab. There he landed a nice combination, but he was off balance. Right hand gets through by Solis. Solis complaining of that uh, Sanchez right hand, maybe finding the back of the head. See Solis trying to set up behind that jab here in this third round. And that's what he should be doing. Establish the jab, let it go, vary the jab, give some movement to the stiffer Sanchez and utilize more head movement and upper body movement. There you go. Stole him with a right hand there. Solis definitely has his legs back underneath him and Looking a lot better here in round number three than he did at points of round number two. See, Sanchez definitely loading up still with his shots. Well, one of the things Sanchez does that Solis hasn't totally been able to take advantage, he comes in squared up. His uh, symmetry is wrong. He, he's, you, need to be, you, know, you need to be off center, and he's too square. See his legs there? Yep. That's, uh, he should just really, uh, what Solis should do is when he just throw that right hand right down the center. Don't even point for the chin or in this case, or even maybe turn it towards the, the, the beard, the, right. the, the billy goat beard that Sanchez has, and it would find a home because he squares up too much. Good fight, though. Absolutely. Coming up on the final 10 here of round number three. Nice left hand. Combination of the body by Solis. Landing the shots. TJ DeSantis, James Smitty Smith, night one of a two-night double header for RJJ Boxing here on UFC Fight Pass. Icon Fighting Federation bringing up the rear on Friday night. We'll see mixed martial arts action inside the ring. I won't be with you for, uh, for that one, TJ. You're always with me in spirit, Smitty. <laughs> Good answer. I like the movement of Solis that he's trying to utilize this... Uh, ring here doing a little more feints give your opponent something to think about not everybody has great natural upper body movement but you can do other things use your legs feints goes a long way and Sanchez has not been able to land any more solid right hand since we've seen more movement by Solis it's a good body shot by Sanchez. Sanchez trying to come forward again. So he's able to slow it down a bit, initiate that clinch. 
That's what you gotta love about a good boxing match is the adjustments that are made over the course of a fight. And Sanchez trying to make that adjustment by raw power to the body. Oh, Sanchez is abandoning in any pretense of defense. <laughs> it's all offense by him right now. And he is coming in there just not even worried about getting hit, and thus he's getting hit a little bit. But this is what he should have done when he hurt him. You're right, yeah. You know, we talk about round, that, yeah. that, that, that happening early in the, in the fight, as you mentioned, the second round, like maybe he was just a little bit, maybe too tentative to put his foot on the gas pedal. Good shotgun jab by Solis. Left hook there by Solis, kind of a slapping shot, but nevertheless, it scores points. Get off of those ropes is what he should do. Slide off of there. Now for Solis, he's got to believe that he's eaten Sanchez's best punch and has been able to stay upright for it. Is that giving him confidence here, you think, Smitty? I think that, and he's just now established a, a better rhythm and better uh, distance. I, I'd like to see him not even take any of those shots because the way that uh, Sanchez is coming in, it's easy to slide off of the ropes against him because he doesn't cut off the ring. He just comes straight in. Right. He just comes, see, he's not cutting off the ring at all. So any, any time that Solis wants to slide out of there, he can, lands the left hook there. There we go, four rounds down. We've reached the halfway point of this fight. Mention it, you know, when it comes to there, or even judges who forget about it. A lot of so-called great judges don't even apply it. And ring generalship, well, don't even ask me about that because... Uh, I've met uh, Hall of Fame judges who don't even know what that means. So there's a beautiful jab by Solis. Another one. That's about, it's really accurate. See how when, when Sanchez comes in, he's just squaring right up. He is so open, but he's a powerful guy. So right. what I'm saying isn't easy. It's tough because he's so, he's definitely a, the stronger man of the two, but now he's just catching, getting pot shotted by Solis. Not a lot of power with those Solis shots, but so what? Good, better head movement by Allen. A little niftier here, and that's why he's having the success. Yeah, Sanchez, I mean, still not breaking his aggressive posture moving forward, but eating a lot of Solis' shots here in round number five. Sometimes you just got to forget about there. There aren't a lot of fans here, but there are a lot of fans watching and cheering for Solis. You got to, the great fighters have always told me when they're in there, they forget about, they don't even think about nothing but that opponent. You know, uh, it's great to try to impress fans, but at the end of the day, you got to really, this is a focused sport. You really have to be focused and get sort of in that zone. And I think that Solis has found that the last few rounds. He's seeing everything coming and he's much more accurate. See that right there, he doubled up on the jab, slid with that, he rolled with that right hand. And he's uh, getting Sanchez uh, a few cocktails, get him a getting him a little drunk. I like that. Cocktails, no, getting no, drunk? No, that, oh, okay. that analogy, that okay. <laughs> analogy. There's a, there's a little bit of tequila right there. Very nice right hand there. You mentioned the styles here on display. Solis just, you know, really slick with his output here. And, and Sanchez has tried to double down on that aggression, but it really hasn't yielded him much. Nice well, right hand there, though. And you brought out a nice point earlier. When you have that uh, stoic style and you're, everything's hard and you're tense like Sanchez, you have a tendency to, to tire out. And you mentioned, well, will he carry that power? I see the power diminishing. Not to mention that he's getting hit with a lot of shots and I see some blood in his mouth and who's the guy coming forward now That's exactly right it's Juan Solis the tide turning a bit in this fight as far as the output is concerned final 10 seconds here nice right uppercut there by Solis finds a home and Solis definitely coming alive here right hand again I just don't see a lot of the, the, the starch and steam that Sanchez had earlier and he's got his mouth open from time to time, which is obvious sign of 
of fatigue. But if he's going back, then he's uh, running out of gas. He is not a guy that's going, typically would go back. Lands a couple of shots there. And again, though, still heavy as far as the output is concerned. Maybe not as quality as he would like it. Would you like to see Sanchez maybe not necessarily take a, a round off, but maybe try to conserve some energy for, you know, a, a, a surge later in this fight? Because right now, the, the punches just don't have the pop. Yeah, and I think one of the things that would behoove him is what he just did there. Start landing. Well, that'll take a lot out of you, that body shot. But just to use his own jab to give himself, uh, to land some shots and uh, create some openings and, and, and also give himself some time to try to recover. But now he's getting hit with some really great body shots by Solis. And he's, he's, he's backing up. He's against the ropes. He's not moving. So he could be in a situation of getting stopped here. Beautiful left hand finds he's a hurt. home for Solis. And out of that corner now is Sanchez, but still very much in trouble. Left hand finds a home again. Solis should throw the uppercut. Uh, I'm always calling for uppercuts when guys drop their heads, but... And so, Lisa, there it was. Beautiful. You can see just the look on the face of Sanchez showing and painting a much different picture than earlier in this fight. Again, back into the corner trying to utilize some head movement. Solis, really nice, going right to the solar plexus of Sanchez. And he's, he's uh, close to, to going down. He's in a lot of trouble. I don't know if Solis you know, knows how much trouble he's in, but we certainly can see it. You can see a nod on the left side of the face of Sanchez starting to show itself. Nice right hand to the body. Sanchez still trying to throw in kind, but not with the power or aggression that we saw so, earlier in the fight. Solis switching to southpaw. Must have seen something. Now back to conventional. He's trying to create something. But he is uh, clearly dominating the action. Final 10 seconds here of the round. By way of stoppage and wow. That is uh, quite the or quite the turn of uh, fate from what we saw in round number two when Solis was badly hurt. But uh, tonight, uh, it belongs to him. He'll get his hand raised. You know, gentlemen, in an effort to prevent the blue corner from receiving further punishment, referee Hamid Funki calls a halt to the action with an official time of two minutes forty-seven seconds of the seventh and penultimate round, declaring the winner by way of technical knockout, still undefeated. El Cachorro, Alan Solis. 12 wins, seven by way of knockout, Alan Solis. Trouble, and he would come back and establish his own prowess. in short one to the head turned it over torqued it another one all that would really set up some body shots like that and back to the head and <laughs> something uh, I'm not la I'm only laughing because I've I've been hit with those kind of body shots and that was like there was five straight right hands in a row like to see that he was feeling it and unfortunately for Sanchez so was he absolutely Sanchez very game throughout the fight, but tonight this one belongs to Alonso Lee's getting the